Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a Crypto 101 video. It's a segment in which I cover stuff that I think is important as just like an overall knowledge base if you're involved in the crypto community or cryptocurrency in general. Uh, a little housekeeping first, I'd like to start by reminding you guys to check out the uh, Crypto Basic Pod if you haven't. Obviously, they are a friend of mine. I've been on their show. Um, they may eventually do a cameo on the channel. Good informative guys, great useful information. I listen to them when I commute to work. It makes my life a lot easier. So I wanted to shout that out. Also, I wanted to remind everyone, if you want to support my channel, my patron is up and running, so you guys can pledge there if you want. All of my videos are turned into podcasts and they are posted there. And also, I finally, after so much effort, got my web store up and it's available on my normal website. So you can buy merch, I've got t-shirts and a bunch of other silly stuff up there, including stickers if you're interested. The topic of today's Crypto 101 video is going to be about the Lightning Network. We've all heard about it. We, you know, it was a big thing that was discussed. People talk about it constantly. I knew very little about it. And also on my last um, poll on Twitter where uh, Syscoin won, I got a very high response rate for the Lightning Network as well. And a couple of people had mentioned, hey, you know, if you want to do this after the Syscoin video, I think everybody would appreciate it. So here we are. The most important question obviously is what is the Lightning Network? So the Lightning Network is an overlay network that is built on top of a pre-existing blockchain protocol, very similar to how the internet is built in layers. Lightning creates an entirely new layer that offers instant high volume payments, and those are denominated in the blockchain's native currency. How does it work, you ask? Well, the Lightning Network, or the concept behind the Lightning Network, is that not all transactions need to be recorded directly on the blockchain. So that helps to speed up the transactions that are recorded directly on the blockchain. A byproduct of that is that it's going to also decrease the traffic, which in theory should decrease the fees on the blockchain. The first step in using the Lightning Network is funding. So let's say there's two parties, Jack and Jill, and they plan to conduct a lot of trades with each other. Rather than making numerous possibly costly trades back and forth to one another or payments back and forth to one another, they opt to open up what's called a payment channel. In this video, we're gonna use Bitcoin as the currency for example's sake. So traditionally, when someone sends or receives Bitcoin on the blockchain, each individual transaction needs to be recorded on the blockchain. With the introduction of the Lightning Network, this allows parties to open up a bi-directional or a two-way payment channel. Let's get back to step one of funding and back to Jack and Joe. So they decide to open a payment channel and they opt to put in one Bitcoin into the payment channel to fund it. What this means is, is that they are in agreement that they think the transactions between each other are not going to exceed one Bitcoin. So both people are going to send 0.5 or half of a Bitcoin over the blockchain to a multi-signature wallet. This Bitcoin address is controlled collectively by two or more people. And funds can only be released from this wallet when the agreed number of signatures has been reached. So in this situation, for Jack and Jill, if either of them tried to transact anything within this payment channel, both signatures would be required in order for the payment to be processed. At this point, one Bitcoin is now locked up in the multi-signature wallet and it is funded and ready to go. Step two is transactions. So now Jack and Jill, because they've opened this payment channel, can send back and forth thousands of transactions with very little cost without a single transaction being put on the blockchain. I would like to mention that, of course, the speed of transactions is dictated a little bit more by how fast both parties can approve those transactions from the wallet. Now, these thousands of transactions that are going back and forth between Jack and Jill are not being put on the blockchain, but they are, however, being recorded on a micro ledger that is keeping track of everything between Jack and Jill. For as long as the channel is open, all of the transactions should in theory be instant between Jack and Jill because they do not have to wait for any confirmations on the blockchain. However, creating a payment channel just for one payment to one other individual if you don't plan on transacting a lot could be just as costly and wasteful as trying to do a ton of transactions between just two people. So this is the part in which the Lightning Network gets the network part of its name. Payment channels are linked together, which means that payments can use pre-existing channels to send transactions back and forth to people instead of needing to create a new payment channel every time. So at this point, you've probably already figured out on your own that that means that Jack and Jill have a payment channel, but not only Jack and Jill's payments are moving through that channel. 
other peoples are also utilizing their pre-existing channel to get to somebody else. However, this isn't going to be a free service. It is going to incur a small fee. They expect that it's not gonna be a lot, but that payment or that fee will end up going to the people that have opened the channel, so they make something on it. The end result is a very large network that could potentially process huge amounts of transactions without needing to settle everything on the blockchain, meaning transaction speed and cost should be significantly decreased. They estimate that once the Lightning Network is fully implemented and working, that many, if not most of all transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain will be utilized through the Lightning Network. Step three is the consensual closing of a channel. So one individual who is utilizing the channel can request that both parties agree to close the channel. Once they agree, they create a final payout transaction, and this allows the release of all the funds, and all of the funds are allowed to be immediately used after the channel is closed. Many transactions at this point could have taken place between Jack and Joe, but the blockchain doesn't know that. Because of the Lightning Network, the only two transactions that will be processed on the blockchain formally will be the opening of the channel and the closing of the channel. Let's say Jack is closing his channel with Jill, but he realizes that he needs to open one with Alice. If he has a remaining balance from the pre-existing channel with Jill, he can use that to fund a new channel with Alice very quickly and very painlessly. Some trade-offs. The first one is that you can't receive a transaction that is larger than the total sum of your payment channel. Another point to mention is that because your transactions between these individuals and the payment channel is on this micro ledger, it doesn't get stored on the blockchain for all of eternity. This allows you more privacy, but in the same light, you continue to use the same Bitcoin address within the Lightning Network. So that means that in theory, people could track your balances and figure out how much you received from someone that you had a payment channel with. You get instant transactions within the payment channel, but that means that your money is locked up in that payment channel and it won't be released until there is a consensual closing with all parties involved in the channel. Due to the high cost of creating payment channels with people that you transact with regularly, centralized settlement hubs are inevitable and there is a theory that this is going to possibly recreate the bank model. There's even a little bit of conspiracy theory that Blockstream didn't want to resolve Bitcoin scaling issues because they wanted there to be a need for the Lightning Network. This way they could create hubs and collect fees for a profit. Next question is, can we use it? And the answer is not quite. So on October 15th, 2018, they released their 0.4 version of their beta. So it's the first version of their beta that's out. I would like to note that this release is really only for developers of future Lightning Network applications and also technical users. There is the option to run a wallet on the testnet, get free testnet coins, and kind of just mess around with transaction speed so you can get a feel for what it's like to use the Lightning Network. My overall view on the topic is that I think it's a really ingenious way to solve issues that have been plaguing Bitcoin and have really decreased Bitcoin's usability overall. I mean, I've mentioned this before to people that I have, you know, I had wallets with small amounts of Bitcoin in them and I never moved them because I wanted to consolidate everything, but the cost of moving it was the wallet balance, you know, so it was a little ridiculous. It's nice to see that there's an option. It's definitely a great idea. It's a great concept. I'm going to probably at some point do more research on the theory behind the Blockstream um, conspiracy to see if maybe there's actually anything backing that up because I'm curious about it. But again, it is a resolution and you know who knows maybe there won't be an issue with payment hubs in the future i guess only time will tell but you know as i said it's going to make bitcoin usable and it's going to make bitcoin easy to transact with and i think that's one of the huge hurdles it has right now so it's very important that it is implemented i am interested to see what the future holds how it works how people take to it what the actual transaction fees on the blockchain end up being after the Lightning Network is implemented. But again, only time will tell, as I've stated. So I guess we will see what the future holds for the Lightning Network and Bitcoin in general. I hope this answered some of your questions about the Lightning Network. I know I actually really enjoyed making this video because it was, again, something I'd heard about. It's one of those things you're like, I'm gonna keep, you know, I'm gonna look it up. You keep telling yourself you're gonna do research and you never do, but I'm glad I did because it's important, especially because it's coming around to possibly being more used. So hopefully I answered some questions and you guys enjoy the video. If you did enjoy the video, please subscribe. There's a button somewhere in this region. And uh, I hope you guys come watch some of my other stuff and I will see you all soon.